Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Delmer again, and I'm really excited to show you another video on AR Foundation with Unity. In this video, I have something really cool to show you because I think a lot of you asked me for the AR Cloud Anchor. So here's a video, we're gonna go into a lot of code. I'm also gonna show you what's playing behind the scenes, which is going to be a demo that is going to demonstrate the entire cycle of creating an anchor and also resolving an anchor by using the Google API. I'm also going to be showing you a couple of things to take into consideration, such as the wait time that we have to have whenever we're scanning our objects. Google recommends that you wait up to 30 seconds, which means that when you're walking around, make sure that you don't do drastic moves. Otherwise, the anchors are not going to be very accurate when, when you're actually trying to resolve them. So I'm going to be giving you some of those tips. I'm also going to be putting that in the readme file. So let's jump into Unity and start working on it. All right, guys, so let me show you what we're going to be looking at today, which is going to be the results of this video. So as you can see, the experience is going to start after 10 seconds. The, the timer here is actually counting down. As soon as you count down, I'm going to, we're going to provide a way to place the object. I can also change the animation of the object. I didn't want to just do a sphere, so I ended up adding this asset from the asset store, and I'm going to be crediting the other in the description of this video. The other thing that I'm doing right now is I'm basically scanning around this object. I press the host, so you can see that the, the anchor is successfully hosted in Google Cloud. You can see that I'm now trying to resolve it, so I, pre I press the Resolve button, and the character lands on the actually the same position that it was before. I haven't really had any issues with it, except when I don't walk around the, the character. So if we go back here, and you can see that I'm, that I'm kind of moving around the character. The reason for that is because the component that I'm using for Google AR Cloud, it requires that you, it basically creates what's called a 3D feature a map of the area. So the more information that it has about the area, the better that it's going to be at resolving those anchors. So as you can see, I host it. In the other scenario, so here it's going to be landing in the same place. I already show you this. In the next scenario, what I'm going to do is it's going to show you how I can, you know, how I remove it, and we're going to be placing it in a, in a different location. Let me fast forward that, perhaps, thing right there. We hit play, you can see this is a completely new, new anchor. I place it, you know, a little bit far from the original one. I'm basically hosting that again in Google AR Cloud, and I'm going to try to resolve it just to see if it lands in that same area, you guys can see that we have it, you know, in the same area. Also, again, looking around just to see if the anchor is accurate. In this case, I'm going to put it on the floor. Just wanted to test and see if Google was lying to me about mapping this correctly. And you guys, you guys are gonna see some hosting right now, executing. The, the character is, there we go, it's in place. I removed the, the, the character. I'm gonna try to resolve it. And we're gonna see if it's going to land at the same place. And you guys can see that it landed right on the same place. So, so far, super impressed. I, it wasn't really easy to get it going, but the reason for that is, is because it was something new, right, that I haven't done in the past. The other thing that I want to mention too, that this video is not for, you know, any anyone studying with AR Foundation, I would recommend that you watch the AR Foundation videos because there's gonna be a lot of things that I mentioned here that I'm not gonna be covering today. I'm just going to be covering the AR Cloud Anchor Manager, which is the one that we're going to be implementing some of the methods, such as the one to host a cloud anchor, the one to resolve an anchor, and then two other methods that we're going to be using to check progress. So the, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a couple of things in here that I have. And there's going to be a lot in here. I just don't want you to get overwhelmed. These are components that I cover in other trainings. Just know that the air session origin just has a lot of a lot of information, a lot of components because it's the one that is doing you know most of the heavy lifting. So these ones are you know are the ones that I had from previous videos, air session origin. Again, that will be in the air foundation videos. The air anchor manager. The reason that I have that is because we are creating anchors, so I need to be able to create anchors. Airplane manager, air debug manager, raycast manager, so that we know how we can recast the different planes that we create in AR. AR Cloud Anchor Experience Manager, I'm gonna show you that. It's going to be very specific to this video. I also show you something similar in the previous video where I did a drawing example in AR. AR Placement Manager, this is the one that is responsible for placing the characters in the planes. 
AR Cloud. Anchor Manager is the one responsible for communicating with AR Google Cloud. And then AR Point Cloud Manager so that we can actually create point clouds so that the, the when the 3D map is getting generated, it has more information about the surrounding. So this is basically most of the components that are going to be in the Air Session Origin. The other components that I also have are going to be the Air Core extensions. This is going to be a specific to the component that I'm going, to, I'm going to show you how to get going. But this is the one that is going to allow us to communicate to Google AR Cloud. It takes in a session, the session origin, camera manager, and also a config file that specifies whether you're going to be allowing Cloud Anchor or not allowing Cloud Anchor mode. So it's pretty simple. So if you want to create a file, you right click in the project and then AR Core Extensions and then get that, that created. It's going to create it. And this is the only option really that you're going to that you're going to have there. The other thing that I also have is just you know the UI piece here where I show you in the video we have the retycle here that it's going to be animating as we are trying to detect planes and also feature points. I also have a host result and a clear and the host is the one that is going to be calling you know when we want to host an anchor in the cloud. Resolve is going to be the one that it's going to try to resolve that anchor now that it is hosted. Clear is just a, a bound that is going to allow me to clear the previous anchor so that we can test that the resolve is working. The other piece in this project is going to be the, the character placements. So if we go, I'm just gonna drag it and drop it in the scene view so you guys can see what it is. And if I go into the character body, you're gonna see that that's the character that we were looking at, right? And if I just turn lights off, you're gonna be able to see it. And there's a couple of things in here. I just have, you know, the main object. This one has a AR character animator toggle. The reason for that is because in this object I have multiple options. So I also have an idle, fight button, and a run button. So that way you can change the state and it's just not a boring object that doesn't do anything. I just wanted to do something cooler. And an animator on the character body, and then the cube is going to be the floor. The reason I do a cube on the floor is because I wanted to see shadows. So if I turn this on, you guys are gonna see that the shadows show correctly. I'm also using a custom shader that is located in the shaders folder. So you can download this project from GitHub. It's gonna be available in Patreon tonight and then it's going to be in GitHub available to everyone in about a week. Okay, let's go ahead and close out of that. So that's basically all these components and I know there's a lot in here but I'm gonna show you now how do we get it set up, right? Like how does this actually cause the Google AR components and that's, I wanna kinda of start fresh, but I wanted to give you an overview of all the components as far as the hierarchy that are going to be required. So the first thing that we're going to do is let's go ahead and go into the API. It's going to, you go into console.cloud.google.com and it's going to go into the root and I'm going to show you what that is. So if you need to set this up, this is the first thing that you're going to need to do. Of course, you're going to need to do this before you create the project. So I recommend that you create a project. That's what I did. You can go into this, this website. It's going to tell you to create a project. My case, I already have it, so I'm just selecting that. And it's gonna give you these, basically this dashboard. You can see the APIs, all the, the different requests that, I, that I've been making. But this video is not about Google Cloud, so I'm gonna to try to keep this limited. So the next thing that you need to do is go into the APIs and services, and then click on credentials. So the reason why you need to do this is because you need to create an API key. Right now, this is visible. I'm gonna be revoking this key later on so that you know I don't get billed millions of dollars for all the requests. <laughs> but anyways, all you need to do is it's just create an API key, you click on the plus symbol, API key, and then you know it's just gonna walk you through that process. It's pretty simple. You can just we can actually do it one more time. And that's really all I need to do and then it'll give you an API key. And it's gonna remove it because I don't need that other API key. You can just you know delete it. You also have some options in here if you want to restrict it to iOS, iOS apps, Android apps, a restrict key to a specific service. And in our case, I have it restricted to only allow AR Core Cloud Anchor API, which is the API that we're gonna be calling. The SDK is gonna be calling. And so, yeah, so, so far, that's the only thing that you need to do here. The, if you create this key and you don't see the AR Cloud Anchor API, the, the reason for that is because you need to enable it first. So. You need to go into this, and I'm gonna put this in the readme here. So set up an API key, and then we're gonna say to, it's going to be set up or enable the Google AR Cloud Anchor API, 
we, we might be able to just do reverse this. I think it'll be more correct if we just do one and two here. And then you enable it, I already enable it, but you can see that I haven't selected a project, so it doesn't know. So as soon as I do that, you're gonna see that I get managed because that's already been enabled. So make sure that you go into that side. So let me, yep. Let me go ahead and remove this link here just to make sure that it shows me, it shows me that. Okay, so I, I don't think it did it. Let me go back and let me go back. And you can actually go into the library. I think if we just, if we go here, and this is gonna take you to the library of everything that is available. So we can just do like anchor and let's see if that shows. And yeah, it shows, yeah, you can search just for anchor. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just go ahead and paste this here and so that you guys know what the link is. We'll just do a little, like if it was code, something like that. There we go. I don't think I need everything, everything else. Okay, so I'll just do, I'll just do a link, I think. Yeah, that way you guys can click on it. Okay, so that's the first thing. You're gonna do enable these AR Cloud Anchor API. The next thing is going to be, you're gonna be creating your, you know, your API key, restricting the API key to use that, unless you have more APIs that you wanna use, then you can allow more APIs. So those are gonna be the two things. The, the next thing that you're gonna go through is you're gonna go into the documentation. I already went through this, so I don't wanna, I don't really wanna go into all of this because it's gonna bore you to death, but I'm gonna be telling you what you need to do. So the next thing, I'm just gonna put this here as a reference. We can just say review. We can say review documentation and I'll clean this up later. But this will walk you through everything that is available for AR core extensions for AR foundation. So mainly what this is, is an extension package that Google it has created for Unity developers. And you guys can see that it is in here. They also have a few examples if you wanted to go through some of these examples, I actually went and looked at the cloud anchors, the persistent cloud anchors so that I know how to implement it. So this was super useful when I needed to implement this feature in the example that I'm gonna be showing you that we're gonna be implementing. So the next thing that you'll need to do is once you get that going, let's go ahead and go back in here and there's gonna be a link in here to download the extension package, which is gonna be the releases. And if you click on that, it's gonna tell, it's gonna take you to a download, right? So what you need to do is download this. That way we can, we can extract it to our computers and we can add it as a package through the package manager. So this is gonna be what you download. I already did it. So once you download it, it's going to look like this. We're gonna go into, I believe I put it under code. So it's gonna go Dilmer code and I have an install folder. It's gonna be, I'm gonna use this for all my different packages. And the package, once you extract it, is gonna look like this. It's gonna have a package folder. It's actually gonna be like this zip file. It's gonna put it into a package. I decided to put it in a folder. That way I can organize it. I'm gonna actually get rid of this one. And then go into package. And it's gonna have a package.json. So this is very similar to anything that you see in Unity right now when you go to a package manager, except that this is on the disk. So the next thing that you need to do is you're gonna go into Unity and then package manager. And you're gonna click on you're gonna click on the plus symbol here. Once this is finished loading, let's just give it a second here. There we go. And you're gonna click on add package from the disk. Once you do that, you're gonna tell it you know where where the package is gonna be. You're gonna go into install or whatever the directory is. Go into the folder package and then select double click on the package.json. And that's going to show you exactly what I have right here. And with this, you can import the project that they have as an example, and then you can run it, build it. You can also do either the cloud anchor example or the persistent cloud anchor example. I didn't get this one working because they're using a component that is deprecated. It's using the, the unit components, which is the networking deprecated versions. So I didn't, I just looked at, looked at the code on this one. I did get this one running. It's actually really helpful. This one will work with the Unity 2018.4 version that I have. So the next things that you're gonna need to do is you need to find out the versions that we're gonna need, right? Like we're gonna need AR Foundation, the version that they support is AR Foundation 4.1.0 Preview 5. The same thing with AR Core XR plugin. And even though we're building, in this case, in my case, I'm doing an iOS app, you can also use this for AR Core. The, the reason that, I'm, that I also have AR Core XR plugin is because we're using Google APIs in order for us to connect to the Google Cloud. So we're doing AR Key, but we're also gonna need the AR Core XR plugin. Just make sure that you know that. That way your extension package, which we downloaded here, it's going to work okay. So AR Foundation, AR Core XR plugin, 
ARKit XR plugin. All of them are using the same version, so just make sure that you're using that version for that 1.0 preview 5. And that's basically all the packages that we're going to need for, for now. The, the next things that you're going to need is we're going to need to implement the, you know, the hosting of the anchor. So if we go into the, the AR Cloud Anchor Manager, which is the one that we're going to be implementing, there's going to be a couple of things that we're going to be, we're going to need to implement in here. And I'm going to give you an overview of what I have already. I didn't implement it at all because I had some feedback from some of you who, who watched some of my videos in the past that you wanted me to go into more detail coding wise. So that's what I'm going to do. We're going to be implementing the Q anchor. We're going to be implementing the host anchor, resolve, checking hosting progress, and then also check resolve progress. So this is why they have these comments to be implemented because we're going to be implementing it today. And the, the other method that we're going to be implementing is going to be what we do in the update. So a couple of things to know is I have a Unity event resolver. This is just a, basically a, it's extending the Unity event because I need to tell the place manager. So if we go here, let's go up because I need to, as soon as I, I capture an anchor and I resolve the anchor, we need to communicate to the air place manager that we, you know, we have a new anchor. So I want you to create a new, a new object. In our case, it's going to be the character. So that's why I am passing the transform here. So we can just use, use a Unity event to make that, that basically that call. So a couple more things. I have a, a reference to the air camera and I'm going to show you why that is. And, and the reason for that is because I need to know how accurate is the anchor and if I am, if I have a good capture of the anchor because, and I'm going to, sh I, let me just show you as soon as we get to that point. The, the next one that I have is resolve anchor pass timeout. What this is, this is going to wait 10 seconds before it actually tries to make a new call. If for whatever reason we can get a response from the Google, you know, from the Google API, we're going to be waiting 10 seconds before we try to ask Google API if it's done. So you can change this, this value. I think we can, we can change it to a lower number. I think I did a lower number on the inspector. Let me go back and we can look. Yeah, I actually did half of that, which is five seconds. I know some of you asked me in Twitter if, if you know, how fast this was. So you can change this and you can actually check, you know, more frequently or you can implement it differently so that we don't do it this way. But this is how it works. And the other thing that I also have is an AR anchor manager reference. And this is the component that I'm using to create anchors. This is part of, part of AR foundation. Pending host anchor, this is gonna be the, the anchor that I'm gonna be queuing. So this implementation only allows for one anchor at a time. I'm gonna change it on the next video so we can do multiple anchors, we can resolve multiple anchors. Just know that this is going to be the reference of as soon as a placement manager creates a, a character, I'm going to be updating this reference. And then once we're done with when we want to host it, I'm going to be using this value to host it to the cloud. This is going to be a reference of the cloud anchor that I get from calling the Google API. This one is going to be the ID that I save of the anchor that I, the cloud, the anchor that I wanted to resolve. This is going to be two different properties that I'm going to be using to determine if we're currently, you know, updating, trying to host an anchor, or if we're currently trying to resolve an anchor. I could probably just rename these to host in progress. I think it'll make more sense. I'll leave it for now. And then save to resolve pass. This, this is just a timer that I, an accumulation of a timer that I'm checking to see, okay, if I, if I hit the, basically my, my timeout, then at that point, I'm going to make a new call. So this is what I'm using to, to basically keep track of that time. And then the unit resolver, it's going to be the, the unit event here that I'm, you know, that I created by extending the, by inheriting from the unit event. I think that's a better word. And on the awake method, this is what I have right now. I'm just creating a new one of those. And I think resolver is actually a little confusing because normally a resolver independency injection is used for resolving instances. So we can just say, we can just call this one something else. It's going to call it, let's go ahead and rename it. And we can just say, this is going to be the anchor. Let's see, anchor created event. I think that, that makes more sense. It's going to be the event that it's going to be triggered when, the, when we resolve the anchor. And then we can just call it cloud as well. Just try not to get too, too deep into names, otherwise we won't finish. <laughs> but anyways, we'll create that. And let me rename this one as well. It's going to call it the same anchor created event. Just 
rename that, and then the callback here have a listener. It's going to be the transform, and I'm going to be calling the error place manager instance. I'm using a singleton, and then I just recreate the placement based on the transform. So I'll show you how this is all invoked be beneath once we implement some of these methods. All right, so the next method that I want to cover is going to be this get camera post. And the reason that I'm doing this is because the implementation of AR Core actually provides a way to make sure that the feature map quality is accurate. When I call it, well, when I talk about feature map quality, remember that map that I told you that when you rotate the camera around the anchor, it's going to create a map. Well, this is going to be used to make sure that the map is it's you know has high high quality. Otherwise, if it's low quality, the anchors are not going to be able to resolve. So this is just something that I copy from the other project. Pretty simple. We just get a pose and it's going to be the position of the camera and also the rotation of the camera. So now we get into some of the, what I call the anchor cycle or the cloud anchor, anchor cycle. We just call it the cloud anchor cycle. This is everything that we're going to do to, we're going to be queuing an anchor. We're going to be hosting an anchor. We're going to be resolving an anchor. And we're going to be also checking to make sure that the, you know, the hosting progress has completed. If it has completed, we're done. And also if the resolve is completed. I also wanted to show you something else. Let's go ahead and let's see if I can find it easily. We can look at, at this documentation. Let me actually, I'm also going to copy this into the readme file here. And we can we can just review, have you, actually that's the same link. So this is the documentation I want you, want you to look at. But I also want you to go to the overview because it's going to walk you through the high level. So we're going to do, I'm going to tell you to go here to the overview because it's going to give you an overview of the anchors and also the implementation for iOS. So a couple of things, I'm going to scroll down quickly because I, I just want to focus on these drawings, these GIFs. So you notice that the phone was rotating around, right? So if we start here, you can see, and that's what I did when, I, when we were creating the anchors. I was rotating the phone around the target objects. And then when I'm done, I press the host button in our implementation. And then what that does, it basically is going to make a call to the cloud, which therefore is going to call the Google API, Anchor API. So that's the first thing. That's that's what we're going to be doing in the, in the host anchor. This is going to be just adding a reference, but host anchor is going to do this. It's going to communicate with Google and then Google, and then we're going to be checking, okay, is that completed? Is that completed? That's what this one is going to be doing. I'm going to be hosting and we're going to say, okay, is that done yet? Is that done yet? If it is done, then awesome. We did save the anchor. Now we need to resolve it, right? Because it is sitting in Google's databases. So we need to know what that is. And that's what this one is going to be. So if we go down here and we look at this, it's going to be similar to the drawing above it, except that we are, in this case, we are going to be resolving. And this one, they're showing two phones trying to resolve the same anchor. So let's just wait for it. You can see so this one is just scanning. And then, you know, at some point it's, it's going to go up and then it's going to come down to resolve it. So this is the first drawing that we saw here where we host it. And then this one in this case is just basically mapping the area and then resolving it. So that's what we're going to be doing here, resolving and checking, you know, the completion of the resolve. So how do we get started? So the first thing that I want to show you, if we go into the place manager, and the, this implementation, again, I'm not going to cover the placement manager. If you want to look at this, you can look at my AR Foundation videos and look at the AR placement videos. It's going to show you how to place an object in AR. So because I'm skipping that part, the part that I want you to concentrate on is going to be this part right here. So this one, we're going to be instantiating a new object. In this case, it's going to be our character. So as soon as I, I instantiate that object, we're going to be getting the reference, which is going to be a game object. I'm going to be creating a new anchor, which we're going to be passing the heat post position, the heat post, heat post rotation. And then I'm just going to make the place game object that we just created a child of the anchor. So at this point, we have an anchor with the game object, which, is, which in our case is going to be the character. So now that I have that, I already created a, you know, I created a character with an anchor. So now we need to queue it. And by queuing, it's really not using a queue. It's just a reference. It's basically a step before we host it. So if we go into here and I go into the implementation, right now we haven't implemented it, but what we need to do is we need to basically add the reference. So if you remember above it, we did a pending host anchor. So this is going to be the, the reference that we need to, we need to say here. I'm just going to say, you know what? I want you to use this reference and I'm going to be passing in the anchor, which again is going to be our character. 
And then that's really all this method it's going to be doing. That's really all we need to do here is just add the reference. So now that we have the reference, somebody's going to say, well, now I need to host it, right? So now if we go back into Unity and we look at the UI, it's way here and then go into our canvas. I'm going to try to show it to you this way so that it makes more sense. So now that I have the reference, we're going to be pressing this button, right? So if we go into this button and you look at the onClick event, this has a reference to the AR Cloud Anchor Manager, host anchor, which is going to be this method. But right now it doesn't have anything. It just says, I'm just going to call the method and I'm done. So that's what we need to do. We need to, we need to implement this. So I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be doing a lot of logging in some of these so that we have more information. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to call my debug manager and we're going to say, okay, log info. The log info that I'm going to do here is I'm going to say, you know what, host anchor, it's getting called. This is so that we have more information. So we can just say host, host anchor call in progress. And more likely, I'm just going to copy that for, you know, anything that we need to do below. And then I'll just rename the methods. The next thing that I need to do is I'm going to use what's called a feature map quality. And if you look at this, this comes from the Google XR AR core extensions feature map quality. And it tells you here that it indicates the quality of a pitch of a feature point seen by AR AR core preceding few seconds from the given camera. So AR core and Google, they, well, Google AR core recommends that you wait at least up to 30 seconds before you actually host it. So this is just going to make sure that everything, so we can say recommend up to 30 seconds of scanning before calling host anchor. And I did it, I think you can do this through the UI, you know, make, make your experience more, you know, intuitive by providing the UI to accommodate to these 30 seconds. But I think this 30 seconds is too high. I think in some cases I did 10 seconds, five seconds, and it still works. So this is going to be a, a variable that's going to allow us to check. So you can, you can use this for a lot of things. So, and then I'm just going to say AR anchor manager, and it's going to give us, there's going to be an estimate feature map quality for hosting. This is going to be the method that we're going to be calling. And this is actually going to say get camera post. So we're going to be passing in our get camera post. And then it's going to give us a quality back. And that quality is the one that we can use, you know, to determine if the quality of the post is good or not. I think in the, in the previous, in, in my previous implementations, what I did is I, I just printed these values so that I knew what the quality was. So right now we're not going to use it. I just want to, I just want you to, to know that, that it's available. We can just say feature map quality. Quality is, and then we can just put the value value there. It's going to use a string interpolation here. And then we just say quality in here. Okay, so, so far so good. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to actually host the anchor. So right now we haven't really hosted anything. All we're doing is we're, you know, we're, we're just checking the quality of the feature map. So the next thing is going to be, we're going to use the cloud anchor variable that I show you from above. And then I'm going to say AR anchor manager, and then we're going to be hosting the anchor. And this is going to be taking an anchor. So the anchor that we're, that we're going to be using is going to be the one that is currently pending. So we're going to be passing in the pending anchor and just going to put that as one of the parameters. And then it's also going to be asking for the TTL, which is the time to leave for the anchor. One thing to know, and it tells you here that the maximum value for an API key implementation of what we're doing is going to be one day. So if you want your anchors to leave up to, you know, up to 365 days, so greater than one and less, less than or equal to 365, you're going to have to implement a different dedication mechanism, so which are not going to be covering today. But you, you basically need to use tokens and you need to make sure that you're, you're sending the tokens correctly and then sending that information to Google. So right now we're going to keep it simple. We're just going to be using API keys. So I'm just going to hard code it to one. Just know that we can, you know, in a future video, we can implement the other authentication. Okay, so now that we have that, we have a cloud anchor. And we should be getting a reference right away here. It, sh it probably could complete fast, but I don't think it's going to be completing that fast. So we're going to have to check whether, you know, this is done or not. And I'm going to show you how to do that. So the first thing that I'm going to do here, if this is no, something went south, right? Like something didn't work. That could mean that we didn't set up the the Google, you know, the, the AR core extensions correctly. That could mean that we don't have an API key set up correctly. So if this is null, I want to error it out right away. 
So we can just say, we can just, you know, have a generic method, in, a generic message in here that says, unable to host Cloud Anchor. So we can just say, unable to host Cloud Anchor. So just some, some error. And know that this AR Debug Manager is going to be printing to the UI, so we're going to be able to see this at all times. I like to use it because it's more visible. So if the Cloud Anchor is not null, then I know that it's currently working. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, Anchor in progress, which is going to be this one. We can actually rename that. It's going to bug me if I don't. I can just say Anchor Host. I think I call the other one Resolving or Let's see, our results. So we just call this one host. That way we can keep everything, you know, everything aligned. So I'm gonna say anchor host in progress. Okay, and we're gonna set it to true because we know that the, the call was successful. We did get a clan anchor back. It, we just don't know if it's done or not. So the next method that we're gonna be implementing is gonna be the check hosting in progress, right? Because we know that we're in progress and so now we need to make sure that our cloud anchor actually finished. So to do that, you can use something called Cloud Anchor State. And this is gonna tell us whether, you know, whether it's completed or not. So I'm just gonna say, you know what? I wanna know the state of the Cloud Anchor. So I'm just gonna say Cloud Anchor. And then this is gonna have a state property in here, which is gonna be the Cloud Anchor State. So it's gonna give us an enum back and it, this, this enum is gonna allow us to check the, the actual state of that. So the, the, in order for you to do a check, you're gonna do if and then Anchor State. And there's gonna be multiple things in here that we can check. So the first thing that I'm gonna check is I wanna make sure that this was successful. So I'm just gonna say cloud anchor state, success. And this is gonna happen as soon as, you know, the anchor is hosted successfully in, in Google. If it was hosted successfully in Google, then we know that the anchor update in progress needs to be set to false. So I'm just gonna do that. Host in progress is gonna be set to false. And then I also need to know which, you know, which ID I'm going to be resolving. So if you remember from, from above, I had a string that I could specify. I call it the anchor to result. And this is going to allow us to basically to cache what anchor we need to resolve next. And I'm just gonna say cloud anchor. And then we can get the ID here. If I just type in ID, you're gonna see the, and again, I'm gonna rename this. I don't like that. So I'm just gonna say anchor ID to resolve. I tend to do that a lot when I look at something multiple times, so uh, I apologize if that's confusing you, but that it's going to make it easier for, for you to read when you're, you know, when you're looking at this code later on. So, and then what I'm gonna do as well is, okay, if, if the cloud anchor stay, just copy that variable, it's not successful, so I'm just gonna say cloud anchor stay. And in this case, what I'm gonna check is I'm gonna say, okay, task in progress. So. What this, is, what this means is we're not in progress and it's not successful, so the next state that we could have is basically something went south, right? Like something did not work. So in this case, we're gonna have an error, so I'm just gonna go ahead and copy. We're gonna copy this. I'm gonna say, unable to host, so we can just say, error while hosting, cloud anchor, and we can just, you know, have that information. In there, we can also put the stay in here. That's gonna help us to troubleshoot this, just in case, you know, we get an error. And I did get a lot of errors when I was implementing this, so that's why I have a lot of logs everywhere. Okay, so the next thing that I need to do is anchor, the anchor host in progress is also gonna be false if I were to get an error or if it, if it is successful, because I don't want this to, in, you know, to keep checking indefinitely if the, ho the, the hosting is completed or not. So that's that piece. So the next piece is, okay, now that we have that, now that I host it, how do I check the state of that? And that's what we're gonna be doing in the update method. We're gonna be doing two parts. So we're gonna be doing checking for host, for hosting, and we can also do checking for resolution, result. We're gonna say for host, result, and then resolve, result. It's gonna take me a, some time to basically pronunciate that correctly, but anyways. And we're gonna be doing, now that we have that, we can check, okay, now that I have this variable set, we're gonna be checking if it's true. If it is true, then we know that we're trying to host something. So I'm gonna be checking for the progress. I'm gonna say check hosting progress, which is gonna be the method we just implemented. And there's never gonna be a case in this implementation that we're gonna be hosting and resolving at the same time. And I'm not gonna allow it, so that's why I'm saying, okay, if this is true, I'm gonna return 
Because in the other case, which I'm going to be checking for the result, then in that other case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, you know, we're going to, we're not going to allow anything after this, if this is set to true, but on the result, we're just going to, you know, we're going to assume that we're not hosting, that we are resolving at that point. Hopefully that, that makes sense. So in this implementation, let's go ahead and complete this one. I'm just going to say, okay, if anchor result is in progress, then I know that I need to resolve the anchor. So I'm just going to say, and I also need to check for my timer. I'm going to say save to result is less than or equal to zero. That means that the timer is up. We're going from a high number to a long number. So that's why I'm going, you know, if this is less than or equal to zero, it's like an, an elapsed ty type of timer. And the, if this is not true, what I'm going to say is I'm going to be basically decrementing my timer. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab my save to result pass. I'm going to be subtracting from my, my timer. So I'm going to do dash equal, and then I'm just going to grab my time delta. And then I'm going to multiply that by one. Make sure that you put a float in there. So this is going to be incre incrementing the timer. And this is going to make sure that as soon as we hit zero or less, and the anchor resolving progress is set to true, then we can check progress on the, on the results. So the, the next thing that I'm going to do is let's go ahead and finish this up and then we'll go ahead, we'll go and implement the, the result. So the next thing that I need to do is I'm going to set this one to the max because I don't want this to, you know, to call, to be calling the, the actual resolution, which is going to be the result, the check result progress. And on every single frame, like if we do that, it's going to, we're going to, we're going to get a bit bail. So I'm just going to say, okay, just give me my timeout. Basically what's going to say is going to, okay, we hit zero, the, the timer elapsed. So we're going to set this to a max. That way we can go through that, you know, that wait time again, and then make the new call. So now that we have that set to the max, what I'm going to do is I'm going to check, okay, as long as the, the ID that we're trying to resolve is not, is not null or empty, then I'm going to try to do, I'm going to try to check for the result progress. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say if it, if it's no, and then we can say no or empty. And then I think it was called, it's going to be the anchor ID to resolve. So as long as this, this one is not no or empty, I'm going to be calling into the, the check result progress. So I'm just going to say check result progress, which we haven't implemented it yet. That's basically how this is going to work. And we can also I'm just gonna copy this here. And and in fact, this one here that is an error, I'm just gonna say error. And I don't think I have, and this one as well. It's gonna make this one an error. The other ones are more informational. We can scroll down here. And this one's gonna be just info. So we can just say that we're currently resolving this, this ID. So I'm just gonna say currently, or we can say resolving. ID and I'm just going to put in the ID here and let me just go ahead and close my parentheses and there we go. So we're going to say, okay, if the, if the timer elapsed and I'm currently resolving and the anchor ID is not null or empty, they're going to be checking for progress and I'm going to be printing this information out to the UI. So that's all the implementation on the update. So, but, but we haven't really implemented the result, right? So we need to do similar to what we did with the host but we're going to be checking for the results. So in this case, I'm also going to copy this and there, this one is no, doesn't need to be implemented. And hopefully this format works better for you guys because we're going, you know, step by step. This one is going to be resolve call in progress. And this is going to be the opposite that, that we did on the other one instead of, you know, actually hosting. So, and I can show you that we can just copy this line, right? You can just put this right here we can paste it. So this one is going to be very similar, except we're going to be, you know, passing in the, the anchor ID to resolve. And there's not going to be an argument. And we also need to call a different method, which is going to be resolve cloud anchor ID. And you guys can see that most of that is similar, except this one is host. This one is resolve. This one takes the pending one, but this one takes the ID of the other one. And, and that should, you know, if the resolve is successfully executed, it means that you know we have we have a good feature map that was generated. Then our cloud anchor should have the information that we need. So I'm gonna do something very similar to what we did here. So I'm just gonna copy this, and we're just gonna paste it right here. And we can see that we're we're trying to get a. I'm trying to you know build a pattern 
on this because when I was looking at the example from Google, it was really confusing. But anyway, so we can just say, unable to resolve Cloud Anchor. And I think in this case, we can say, we can pass in the ID of what we're which we were trying to resolve. And in fact, in this one, we can say, we can also pass in the ID of the one that we're trying to, that we're trying to host. So we can just say, I think in this case, I think in this case, this one is an object. So we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to change the, let me go back down here, anchor ID to resolve. Yeah, I think in this case, we can just do, do just leave it as it is. In this case, I have the ID because I know that I'm resolving that. So I think that's okay. And the other variable that we're gonna, we're gonna need to set is gonna be the, the resolve. So it's gonna say, Resolve in progress, anchor resolve in progress. I'm going to set it to true. And that's everything that we need to do on the result. Now we need to make sure that we check the state of this. So that's what we're going to be implementing the check resolve in progress. So I'm going to go down here to this meta and I'm going to do something very similar to what we did above it. So I'm going to say anchor cloud stay and we're going to just say cloud anchor stay equal. In this case, we're going to be, you know, also checking the, the cloud anchor stay. So I'm going to say Cloud anchor, which is a reference that I'm, you know, that I have up above. And then in this case, I'm also going to be doing the same thing that I did, you know, that I, in fact, that I did on the other one. So we could technically copy this code here and I'm gonna paste it here. And again, this is gonna be very similar because we're, we're basically checking a state. So I'm gonna check, okay, what is the current state of the, of the anchor that I'm trying to resolve? And, but in this case, I don't, you know, this is not the variable that we need to use. So I'm just gonna say resolve in progress, anchor resolve in progress, and I'm gonna set it to false. And I'm also gonna do the same thing on this one. And the, the main difference here is that we're, we don't need really IDs because we already have the IDs. And while resolving, let me just do the same thing here. Cloud anchor, okay. The, the difference here is I know that if it was successful, then I know that I, that I can create a new placement. So that's what the, the, the actual Unity event that I created up here was helpful. And because I need to pass in the transform, and again, I'm gonna rename this one more time, cloud anchor create, oh, actually, yeah, create event, I think it's fine. So yeah, you see, I, I went in and, and renamed it already and I said I wasn't gonna do that. But anyways, I, I know that at this point, the resolution of the anchor was successful. I'm, ch I'm setting this to false so we don't keep checking. I'm doing the same thing here if we have an error. But I wanna make sure that I call my event here. I'm gonna do a question mark because if it's for whatever reason, whoever set this up uh, didn't actually credit, credit an instance, then this should you know gracefully, gra gracefully keep going, otherwise we'll get an exception. So in this case, what I'm gonna do invoke but what I need to invoke is I need to be passing in, you know, the, the actual transform of the anchor so I know at what point the, the Google Cloud API told me that the anchor was saved at. So th this way, this will actually place the, the object that I'm gonna be recreating at the correct position. So I'm just gonna say Cloud Anchor, and then I'm just gonna say Transform. So I know there's a lot of things going on in here, but if you guys have any questions, let me know. But what this is gonna do, it's gonna, it's gonna basically invoke the method that I added as a listener, and it's gonna be passing in the transform. So how does that, does that work is the listener was added as a T, so this is basically using a delegate, and, and I'm using a lambda with the equal and greater than. I'm passing in the method that's gonna get executed, and then in our case, we're passing in T, and, and T, if you go back down here, T, it's actually the cloud anchor transform. So what's gonna happen is, as soon as I call invoke, this method is gonna get called. T is gonna get passed in. This is gonna have the location, rotation, and everything that it knows about the anchor. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new instance of the place, you know, the place game object at that location, which makes it really, really cool because it's gonna be basically placed correctly where it was initially created. So that's basically everything and how this works. I know that I cover a lot, and again, if you guys have any questions about this, let me know. I'm also going to be updating this README, so make sure that you look at the README. I might put this in the in the description of this video, so you guys can have, you know, you guys can have the document, documentation as well. And I also need to credit the author 
of asset use. So I'm just going to be crediting, crediting the, the other in here. We can just say like a special thanks to, and then I'll just put it in there. But anyways, that's everything that I wanted to show you guys. If you guys have any questions about this, please let me know and make sure that you get these from Patreon. If you can, that's going to support me in creating more videos. If you don't want to support me in Patreon for various reasons, because maybe that doesn't provide you as much value right now, but you can also wait for the link in GitHub. It's going to be open, you know, in GitHub in about a week. So you guys can download it there. And again, if you have additional questions, please let me know. Thank you guys. All right, guys, thank you for watching this video again. If you guys have any questions about anything that I just show you, please let me know. I know that I went into a lot of detail and there were some things that I didn't really cover, even though I spent a lot of time in this video. But if you have additional questions, things that I didn't cover, make sure to ask them in the comments below because I'm going to be doing more videos related to this topic. That way we can, you know, we can cover all different use cases that you guys may have. And again, if you want to get the, the code in GitHub, you can get it in about a week. It's also going to be available tonight in Patreon, so you guys can download it right away. Thank you very much, guys.